The prosperity of the 20s was due in large part to a shift from the 19th century's industrial revolution, as symbolized by the railroads, to a 20th century revolution in technology. The invention and development of both the automobile and the airplane defined that shift. The rise of both industries came to be identified with the careers of American icons Henry Ford and Charles A. Lindbergh. Contrary to popular belief, Henry Ford invented neither the automobile nor the assembly line. He did, however, perfect the assembly line, thereby making possible the mass marketing and the popular pricing of automobiles, ownership of which was hitherto restricted to the wealthy. Ironically, Ford's success in making auto ownership possible for those with average incomes made him one of the richest men in America. Like Ford, Charles Lindbergh didn't invent anything. He did, however, make the first non-stop solo flight across the Atlantic, furthering aviation. Landing in Paris on May 21, 1927, in his monoplane, the spirit of St. Louis, Lindbergh embodied the venturesome spirit of the times by soaring 3,600 miles from New York to Paris in just 33 hours. He also started people thinking of airplanes as more than novelties with limited military applications. On September 28, 1920, it came to light that eight Chicago White Sox baseball players conspired with gamblers to fix the 1919 World Series. Among them was shoeless Joe Jackson, who, on his way out of court, encountered a young, teary-eyed fan who cried, Say it ain't so, Joe. Sadly, it was. Clarence Birdseye was on a fur trading expedition to Labrador and happened to be fishing through the ice on a day when the temperature had dropped to 20 degrees below zero. The temperature was so cold that the fish he caught froze solid instantly when removed from the sea. Birdseye took his frozen fish back to his camp and casually tossed one of them in a bucket of plain water. Miraculously, before his eyes, the fish revived and began to turn left and right. After several years of thought and experimentation, Birdseye finally concluded that the fish had survived because it had been frozen quickly. He then reasoned that food could be preserved the same way, and in 1925 he marketed the first frozen food, fish. With the unexpected death of President Warren G. Harding in 1923, then Vice President Calvin Coolidge succeeded to the White House. The 30th President of the United States was then re-elected in 1924, and from 1924 to 1929, America experienced Coolidge prosperity. These were the years when the economic boom reached undreamed of heights or so it seemed. According to figures on the 1920s compiled by the Brookings Institute, the decade's reputed prosperity was never as great as it seemed. While a handful of people did indeed make fortunes in the stock market and in real estate, most people were not so lucky. In 1929, only 2.3% of American families enjoyed an income in excess of $10,000 a year. Just 8% had incomes greater than $5,000. Of the others, 71% lived on incomes below $2,500, 60% on incomes below $2,000, and over 21% had incomes less than $1,000 a year. These studies also established that families living on less than $2,000 did not have enough money to acquire even the bare necessities of life, all of which means that 
in the so-called golden year of 1929, 60% of American families were living in poverty, and another 10% were close to it.